Hey there fellow artists, I'm Jin from Jin Arts and today we'll be exploring why the Loomis method or other similar methodologies, while helpful, can sometimes hinder your artistic growth in drawing faces and how you can get around those issues in your portrait drawings. Before we begin, I would like to say that when I started my art journey, those methods did help me improve on my portraits and these are some examples of my work before and after I started applying those methods. Before, after before and after. So as you can see, these methods do work for portrait drawing and has helped out countless of artists including me to understand the facial proportions and anatomy. But at the same time, if these methods are not used thoughtfully, the limitations encountered can sometimes lead to an unintended stunt in your artistic growth or cause unnecessary confusion for beginner artists that are starting out in their portrait drawing journey. Okay, so the Loomis method is a technique using simple forms and measured landmarks to construct the human head that was created by the great Andrew Loomis. A simple search on Wikipedia will bring you to his entire book as a free resourceful educational content. However, by doing a quick Google search, you can already see some inconsistencies with the examples from the search results. For instance, in these two examples, the first one has a circle that encompasses the entire head including the ears. Whereas the second example has a circle wider than the face, but does not include the ears. So which is it? Like does the size of the circle vary depending on the reference image or... Some issues with starting from a template drawing also causes an over-reliance on drawing tools, where the need to block out the geometric base forms has to be the first step to build upon, resulting in a huge reliance on using tools to get those forms to look almost perfect that leads to a long block-in process of the head template consisting of a lot of lines and dissections before the actual drawing can begin. So what I propose is to instead think of the ball as a head mass. It could be inside or outside of the head. If you end up with the smallest circle in comparison to your reference, then use the edge of that circle to gauge how much you are short of and expand as you draw. Since the base form started off being smaller, it is common to end up with a smaller head structure since you are basing all your decisions on that circle. So don't be afraid to make changes and use your initial drafts as a baseline to make corrections. Likewise, if you end up with a circle that is too big, then cut into it as you draw. As you want to sculpt the forms down like a sculptor, to make sure the head mass actually matches the facial plane as a whole. Now just as a comparison to see how close or far off I am, I'm just going to overlay both sketches on top of the reference and I'm using the chin and jawline as an anchor to judge the proportions. As you can see, although not perfect, but both make for a very workable draft to build upon. Next, we get to the eye line. The Loomis method will instruct you to divide the sphere into half to establish the brow line that will lead you to the side plane of the face, where the flat surface is represented by a circle that can be subdivided further into two halves which allows you to find the eyebrows and the ear while you're at it. Before proceeding to further add in the facial forms and planes on top of the structure of the skull that sits beneath the face, just to finally be able to plan the positions of the eyeballs while finally being able to work your way to the eyes. But if you started with the base template that is inaccurate, you would then have problems getting the eyes to be in the right position. Even when your construction lines of the template line up, the rest of the facial features will also tend to be out of place. So for me, I prefer to use the information from the reference image to rough in the position of the eye line, to try and focus on using only one line across the sphere as the eye line. But why? Because I want the line to anchor the inner corners of the eyes onto that line. But why? Because when you have models where the outside corners of the eyes are drooping downwards, the inner corners become a dependable landmark to make sure both eyes will line up. Likewise, this method will also work when you have models where the outside corners of the eyes tilt upwards. Especially in a three-quarter view like in this example, where one eye tilts a little higher than the other, it is the inner corners of the eyes that are anchoring both eyes onto the eye line. And now as we move on to drawing the rest of the face, the Loomis type methods instruct to just subdivide everything. Having certain parts subdivided into halves, others into thirds or quarters and using those proportions to map out the rest of the facial structure. And to make things even more complex than it already is, you add in these rhythm lines all over the face, manually creating more negative spaces to help in locating the rest of the facial features. 
However, if these methods are used poorly, that's when you end up with circles on the side planes that are often missized or misplaced. As you try to bash a three-dimensional concept onto a 2D image just for the sake of imitating a particular format of drawing. This way of approaching the drawing can also cause some artists to focus more on forcing the facial features to line up with the pre-established template over prioritizing the likeness of the model. Even if you are able to end up with a solid constructed drawing with an extremely well-rendered finish on a level where I'd never ever 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 be able to accomplish in my life, you can also see that the original reference image has a more aggressive pose with the head tilt whereas the finished drawing looks more gentle. Also, even if these templates were constructed well, I want you to see why this may not be the best method to draw portraits with. If you place the template over the first model, you can see that her eyebrows actually do not sit on top of the brow line that's connected to the ear. Rather, they sit below it. Her ear does not sit well exactly at the back quarter of the circle at the side plane. Her eyes do not sit at the halfway line of the base of the keystone. Her nose line isn't dividing the facial length from the hairline to the chin line into half in this case. And her mouth does not fit the one-third measurements from the nose line to the chin line. The same head template also does not fit the next model as the first model has a longer facial structure and the second model has a shorter facial structure where the proportions of their facial features will be unique to their individual measurements. And lastly, the point on the side of the chin to the center of the cross section of the side plane that usually has a line to represent the edge where the front facing facial plane will start to turn towards the side do not line up with the models themselves too. I'm not saying that these methods are bad at all, but all I'm saying is that there is a less complex approach to drawing portraits. Sound fair enough? So now, if you would apply the methods that was explained, it should go a little something like this. I begin by blocking in the circular head mask, which ended up being a little too big, where I would just cut the facial mask into it when drawing the facial shape, followed by reinforcing the gesture line to make sure that all the shapes are connected while using the background and the model as my main positive and negative shapes and using those shapes as a guide to find the individual shapes of the head, hair and body. At this stage, I start to zero in on the placement of the facial features by trying to replicate the shapes in between them. For instance, you can see that the face has a shape that kind of looks like this and the area from the hairline to the top of the eyebrows will have a shape like this shape of the keystone used to roughly gauge the distance between the eyes. The area in between the eyebrows to the eyes look like this, which will lead me to define the shapes of the eyes. Now using the eyes as an anchor to then locate the mouth and the nose from the shapes of the negative spaces formed in between them. This is why I don't feel a need to hyper-focus on getting the most perfect or accurate circle at the start of the drawing or trying to mathematically calculate the sides or frontal planes and have everything look too geometric as a circle is a shorthand for a sphere. A sphere is a 3D form of a circle. So everything added to the sphere just has to follow the same perspective plane of that sphere. If this is too complex to comprehend, then that's where the box method will come in. If the sphere is sitting inside the box, both the sphere and the box will share the same perspective plane to help your drawing be three-dimensional. On a side note, if you're wondering why I have my canvas in Procreate set up this way, instead of having the reference tool for my reference image like this, it's because I prefer drawing as closely as I can get to the site sized method. As drawing when done traditionally consists of a live model seated in front of you, while you have your easel set up in a way where you have a clear view of the model and your canvas in the same field of view to be able to see and draw at the same time as this will make it easier to translate the measurements from the model to canvas, minimalizing the amount of the drawing that would be skewed during the process. The reference tool in Procreate also does not allow us to flip the reference image to check on the drawing and only allows for the flipping of the canvas, where this is an essential way for checking if your drawing is skewed towards your dominant side. The further you stray from this setup, the harder it will be to get an accurate drawing of the model. So if you are having a hard time with getting your proportions right, you want to avoid drawing with the reference image that is too small in comparison to your drawing space or having the reference image in a position where you have to observe and draw 
as separate tasks when you are in the earlier phases of your portrait drawing journey. If you are interested in knowing the tools that are used when drawing in Procreate, you can see that on another video I made in the description down below. And don't forget to leave a like or share this with someone that you think will benefit from the video and to subscribe for more drawing tutorials to come. At this point of the drawing, the more accurate you are able to replicate the shapes of the reference will determine the likeness and the accuracy of your proportions without the need for too many dissection lines in the process. You want to aim for close to 90 or 92% accuracy to be able to leave some room for your interpretations and expressive marks as an artist and leave the 100% accuracy for the portrait photographers and the photocopying machine. The most important hierarchy in portrait drawing is the accuracy of the eyes first, the proportions of the facial features in relationship to the face mask that comes second, then lastly the overall silhouette of the model. This means that if you nail the face accurately enough as the point of focus, everything that sits outside the area of focus can get looser or less accurate so long as the overall silhouette is similar enough to your model. To further emphasize this point, I'm going to show you one of my portraits that I did years ago along with the reference image for 3 seconds each. Ready? Pretty similar, right? Now here's both of them side by side. You can immediately notice that my facial features do not match the reference. Like the forehead measurements are off, the eyebrows are of a different expression, the eyes were experimental, the angle of the nose is not the same, the shape of the mouth is way off, and the shape of the chin completely missed the mark. But the reason why it is similar enough to look like it's the same person as the reference image is because of the silhouette that is holding the piece together. Don't you guys agree? Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below of what you think about this. Or you can just comment the words bunk eyes to confuse the audience that have not got to this part of the video. I hope that these points were able to help clear up any confusions that you may have encountered when using the Loomis or other similar methodologies in the past. And I look forward to seeing if the new knowledge that was shared will make a difference in your future portrait pieces. Happy drawing!